Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining and Mechs episode 22, where we're testing the MechLife Arcless mod. Have the normal setup, a 30 amps I'm drawing with this electronic load fixed uh, from this 3.5 volt set power supply. And we'll read the voltage across the atomizer through a solid aluminum slug and through the mech. Stay. And we'll be able to read the total voltage drop here. This is a re-recording of this uh, video. Uh, I really thought I hit the record button. I thought I double checked that, but something went wrong and I don't have it. So doing this again, um, I had a great deal of trouble, several minutes worth of trouble in the previous video. So maybe it's better that uh, it never got recorded because I couldn't get consistent, even remotely consistent readings from there from this in terms of voltage drop. It varied anywhere from 0.09 to 0.35, which is huge. So it's a four to one ratio, uh, much, much more than usual. I found out that it's sensitive to how well you tighten it. And some mods are much more sensitive than others. And this one is more sensitive. So, sensitive. so definitely tighten it up. Uh, if you have a very long battery and you bottom out the floating contact uh, in the button, there's potential for denting the battery, so keep an eye on that. But otherwise, you want to tighten this up firmly. Uh, so this gives us a chance to see how consistent it can be doing that. Now, uh, first time around, I got 0.09 volts, 0.089 volts for a single, and 0.125 for double. We'll see what happens this time. Arcing damage was there, and you should be probably cleaned every two, 300 presses. Uh, the f micro photographs I did take of the contacts on the first time through, then I took them down with um, a heavy-duty uh, Scotch-Brite pad and cleaned off the contacts best I could. Those I won't be showing you uh, micro photographs of because it wouldn't be fair. Because for all the mechs, I just show the first time through what happens after the first 200 presses when we do the arcing testing later. For this first voltage drop testing, what's important for what I do is I press the button first to close the contacts, you'll see this go to zero volts. Then I fire, and I'm up to a three second pulse. Can you fire a three second pulse of current, reread the voltage drop, the pulse stops, then I let go of the button. So I'm never interrupting or starting current flow, so there is no arcing for all the testing I do for voltage drop. So there can't be any effect, or I can't have that variable of arcing affecting the voltage drops. And let's get started. And we're going to test to make sure this goes to zero volts. Yes, so we've got a good connection here. And let's see what we get for our voltage drop now. Pressing the button, zero volts, and fire the pulse. 0 0.089, or 89 millivolts. This one's higher, 107, 110. 120, that's funny. 110, 85. I'm going to call it 85. And uh, so I'm tightening it up, I think, more than I did before, where I had 0.089, but 0.085, that, that's just no difference between them. Four thousandths of a volt drop difference between the two tests. That's really no change. All right, now I'm going to switch to uh, series. Okay, in the previous test, I got 0.125. Let's see what we get this time. Goes in the contact, zero volts. 0 0.205. 0 
and it's doing the same thing it did before close it and it gets a voltage and then the voltage starts dropping and I don't see that with any other Mac and I don't see this see it in this one when the everything is tightened up but it, th that's getting ridiculous on the tightening but I did something differently to get the 0.125 before okay I figured out what was going on here uh, the dummy batteries the slugs I have inside here, the positive nipple, I had a positive first going in and it was actually recessing or moving up into the recess that's cut up in top there as part of the safety features. So I had to, which meant everything was a little short and I wasn't getting good contact from the constant contact button down here, which gave us a higher voltage drop. So I just flipped mine over, uh, followed the instructions in the user's guide for which direction your batteries go. For me, I have to go positive down, but it doesn't matter. They're solid aluminum slugs. And let's do the testing now in for the series. And we'll press the button, zero volts, and about 0.138. 0 0.122, 0 0.123, 0 0.127. I'm going to call it 0.125 again as we did before for a stack. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, do, actually, uh, I've already done the arcing test, so I don't have to do that again. What I normally do is I use a 0.1 ohm load and I do 200 presses, uh, which I don't subject anybody to. I fast forward through that. Uh, but since I already did that, I will just throw up the macro photographs now. I can take a look. The contact, uh, actually I'll pull out the button and we'll take a look at what's inside. So what you have is this contact here, which goes up and down when you press the button. And then this spring and this contact is always up against the battery. So the contact is made inside here. This point touches up inside there. And I'll show uh, this, one, this part first, the underside of the a contact that touches the battery. And I'll put a photomicrograph of that now. And you can see the small arc of uh, damage there that's blasting away, blasted away the plating, because plating never lasts. Uh, you can't, uh, you can use plating to help with maintenance, but it certainly doesn't help with any kind of resistance, lowering resistance. And it does get blasted away if it's on, if it's on any contact points. Uh, but it cleaned off pretty well. Uh, the high points cleaned off uh, easily because it's not severe damage. And then now, if we'll take a look at the macro photograph for the bottom contact, and you can see kind of a matching a uh, set of arc, a uh, set of contact points uh, that form an arc. And from those, uh, you can see where the two contacts joined up together. So it's not bad, but after 200 presses, 200 clicks at 30 amps, I'd say, yeah, it's time to give those a, a quick cleaning with a Scotch-Brite uh, heavy-duty pad. And those are, if I can get the box out, sorry for the delay, these puppies. And these are fantastic and they last forever so they're not really expensive and what we'll do now um, since we've we've redone the voltages and they're about the same 0.085 for single which is uh, about the same tiny bit better than the uh, brass dreamer uh, not as good as the best performing max but they still uh, perform pretty well just get it tightened and uh, 0.125 for stacked and we'll go to the thermal imaging Okay, we are set up with the device. I've got the atomizer up here. Here is the Arcless mod. At the end here, I've got a small self-adhesive uh, rubber bumper, plastic bumper. So my finger heats up that bumper and doesn't heat up the switch. What we're gonna see is not what temperature it actually reaches. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner, the lowest temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. The hottest temperature the thermal camera seeing now is 28 Celsius. We're, this isn't going to measure the temperature 
that you're going to see when vaping. This is going to be 30 amps continuous. We just want to see where it occurs. Does it happen up here uh, inside in the 510 threads? Does it happen down here where the threads are for the bottom cap, the button? Or does it happen inside the button itself? I don't expect any heating to be in the body of the mech itself. And again, this is a fixed 30 amps. You can see I'm starting to heat up the atomizer with my fingers and I'm going to start current flow as soon as I turn on the load and start it now. Okay, 30 amps is flowing. We'll start to see where any heating might be. There wasn't a big power loss in this, so I don't expect any kind of big quick changes, especially with all the metal that we have to heat up. But we can start to see where it might be occurring. Okay, we see the button is a little bit warmer, maybe one degree. Rotating a little bit to look for hot spots, and I see none. There's only the tiniest bit of temperature increase over here in the left where the button is. And now we're starting to get a little bit of heating up here. I've been heating up the atomizer. I don't know if that's spreading into here. And I'm talking just you know, a degree or two warmer up here. But it's probably the 510 threads and then some heat from the atomizer itself. And then down here, the button, a degree or two. So basically, at least in the, from the outside, there's just no heating. Which I would expect because this uh, mod, Stop the Heat, uh, did about as well, or a little bit better with a 0 .09, 0 0.089 volt drop, did a little bit better than the Times Vape Dreamer in brass. This is a brass mod, and but didn't do as well. It's about three times the voltage drop of things like the broadside, uh, broadside mod and the Admiral. Now you can see some of the heat starting to just spread a little more evenly through it. Again, it, it's very little. If I take my hand out, you know, the hottest temperature, it's, it's what, five, six degrees Celsius above the background heat. So by no means has this become hot. We're just trying to again find where the sources are. So if you tighten it, very well, but it is sensitive to tightening. But when tightened down uh, pretty darn tight, it gives you performance on par with a pretty good mech, like a Times 8 Dreamer. Uh, again, it's not going to equal the best mechs out there, but it still performed uh, pretty well. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.